Thank you, Dr. Nguyen. Uh, our next speaker is Commander Weibach, who is the uh, Chief of MIS and Robotics here in Balboa at the Naval, uh, Medical, Med Naval Medical, Medical Center. Center excuse me. He, uh, he is also the uh, military's leader in robotic surgery. He's going to give a little demonstration uh, of the use of uh, telepresence and tele-mentoring uh, uh, to Santa Barbara, correct? All right. Thank you, Colonel Lim. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sages, for the opportunity to offer this presentation. And um, certainly, as you'll see, it's really going to carry on forward with what Dr. Wynn was talking about. You'll see some similar technology, and, and my focus mainly will be telesurgery. Uh, I will make the comment that uh, when, we, when I first planned on talking about this, you may have noticed in the advanced program, there's a, a mention of uh, remote surgery demonstration. And I learned a lot about some of the hurdles. And I'll talk about some of the hurdles to actually performing that as well as um, some of the limitations of really uh, offering that as an applicable um, modality. And as uh, Dr. Lim mentioned, I will uh, also give a, a demonstration of remote presence uh, surgery and we'll connect to a remote, uh, remote simulation lab. Uh, these are my disclosures. So uh, with telesurgery, we've, we've heard the telemonitoring um, um, telemedicine definition and telesurgery is more the actual act of doing something remotely. So it's, it's different. You're not just offering consultation. There's more complexity to it for sure. And it's carried out by a, a surgeon um, in a distant place and you're using different connectivity, uh, be it fiber optics or satellite connectivity to be able to perform that. And it, it really implies that you're using telerobotics in order to pr perform that procedure. So uh, with that, I'd really like to talk about the history of telesurgery briefly, but talk about some of the landmark uh, events that have occurred, and one's the, the Lindbergh operation. Uh, interestingly, Lindbergh actually is the name of our airfield here, the International San Diego uh, Airport, um, because Charles Lindbergh used this field with the Spirit of St. Louis before he did his transatlantic uh, solo flight, the first one. And this was considered a transatlantic operation, and that's where they um, borrowed that name, the Lindbergh operation. I thought that was pretty fitting that we're presenting that here in San Diego. It happened in 2001, and the concept was proven. You can do telesurgery. There was a group in New York City, and um, the, the surgeons were in New York City. The um, patient was in Strasbourg, France, and they were sitting, basically the uh, surgeon and um, Dr. Professor uh, Marceau and, and Gagné were sitting in a actually a more of an office space setting in Manhattan, sitting at the robotic console and performing the, uh, the surgery. It's a, it was a robotic cholecystectomy. And here he is, um, is the predecessor to what we now know as Da Vinci. It was the, the more the uh, Aesop um, and uh, Zeus model in terms of how this console was configured. But um, it took three fourths of an hour to, to perform the surgery and it, it really went, it went fine. Um, you know, one comment about that, though, is that the amount of expense and coordination to do one, what would be normally a simple uh, procedure, was really tremendous. So it was a, prov a proven point, but what's the practicality? Uh, the other at, um, landmark event I just want, I would like to talk about is um, NEMO 7. So that's, NASA has a series of missions where it uses um, extreme, uh, mission operations and basically what they do is they have a, a, they call it Aquarius, it's an underwater lab, I want to make sure I don't say Atlantis, it's an Aquarius underwater lab. Um, it's uh, in Key Largo, Florida and a doctor, a Canadian doctor, Dr. Uh, Miran Anvari was located in Ontario, Canada and he, he assisted with this mission and basically with this, with this particular NEMO 7 mission in 2004, the point was to show tele, telementoring, uh, telemedicine, as well as telesurgery. So there were astronauts, or aquanauts as they call them. Aquanauts were performing surgery, treatment of patients, simulated patients, performing surgery, as well as Dr. Anvari performed telesurgery, uh, again, using telerobotics on a simulated patient. Uh, here's a picture of a Canadian, he was actually the commander of NEMO 7 mission, and uh, here he is performing, uh, again, this is a simulated patient, but performing a laparoscopic procedure under the guidance of Dr. Anvari. 
who again was located in Canada. So what are the, the, the challenges? Certainly there are many challenges. The concept has been proven, it's, it's available in an extreme situation, but you have all kinds of networking, uh, latency issues, jitter, bandwidth, uh, of course all the medical legal issues with a surgeon operating on a patient who doesn't have actual um, necessarily a relationship or a, um, a in-person relationship with a patient. And I'd imagine, you know, financially, of course, it's uh, very expensive, so it's not really practical. And then I can't imagine the, in, you know, insurance companies, they would just laugh at the idea of covering this from an insurance standpoint for an operation. Um, and, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, financially, uh, certainly uh, very expensive, so uh, not, not necessarily uh, practical. So that kind of, that, that leads to what do we do now? Um, Telesurgery has been proven. It's, it's available in extreme situations. If you happen to get huge institutions, maybe a government involved, you can, you can do that. But, um, you know, back to uh, Dr. Dr. Wynn was talking about, you know, there is tele telemedicine, telemonitoring, and how do we bring that? My focus is going to be more on the surgical side. How do you bring that to the OR? Well, there are devices out there. Uh, there are ways to do that. And if we can bring a surgeon remotely, so an expert, remotely into the OR when the surgery is ongoing. Uh, I think that is the real value in, in 2012. Telesurgery is something we can talk about down the future. It's a proven point. It's a very, very fascinating topic for sure, but what's the practicality there? So this, um, this is the same company that Dr. Wynn was talking about with Touch Health, the remote located in Santa Barbara. They make this device. This is uh, called the RP Vantage. The RP7, um, we'll see a picture of that, but the RP7 was what's used in the hallways. You'll see it wandering around the hallways with a TV screen and going on rounds. Well, this is the RP, uh, uh, RP Vantage, and basically what this allows is a surgeon to be in an OR and have connectivity to an expert. So you can see the video chat monitor. You can see the intraoperative view, so that could be either an overhead view or it could be a laparoscopic or endoscopic view. And, We'll show this um, device, uh, some videos of this device being used, as well as uh, a live demonstration of it, what it looks like. So I just have a few slides here just showing you some demonstrations, uh, again, of the same concept that bringing an expert surgeon into the OR is far more practical and of great use uh, in 2012 or in, in modern era. So in this case, this is neurosurgery. Um, there's an expert surgeon on the monitor there. And uh, he's dialed in, connected to this um, team in Nova Scotia and assisting with neurosurgery. Uh, here's another example. This is cardiac surgery, so it's definitely different specialties. Certainly, um, it's not tied down to any particular specialty, a surgical specialty. And here's an example of a complex uh, cardiac surgery case being performed in uh, not London, England, but London, uh, Canada and then the audience is actually in Columbia. This is a, a video, and it, it will start playing here in a moment. It's that same case I was just talking about. Uh, it's, it's recent, and you'll see how this RP Vantage or telemedicine um, or telemonitoring in the OR occurs. There is the volume. Yes, yes, I, I, I see the, the, the... So this is where our ports were, and this okay. is where we're going to make our incision to okay. expose the left anterior descending coronary artery. Okay, okay. and we'll show you everything. What we'll do also is the stabilizer will come from here. Okay? okay. So I'm going to put the thing for the stabilizer now. Holder for the stabilizer. Now the surgeon, the Colombian surgeon, who's the little picture that you can see, um, uh, that surgeon actually control which screen he's watching. They project into a, a large room like this, and there's actually a whole audience of Colombian surgeons watching. And they can, they're watching a lap, or it's not a laparoscopic, but a thoroscopic view, as well as an actual outside, um, outside the patient view. And then they can also do the video chat. That way you know we're in the right space. I'm going to go on to the next, next slide here. This is another case, is urology. And this demonstrates the ability to show um, endoscopic views as well. It doesn't have to be laparoscopic. It's just whatever S video input or what input you have, uh, you can show. And this is 
a case between, uh, again, London, Canada, and uh, the audiences in China. So you'll see that's the same, same idea. There's different views. They can pick and choose, and it's always helpful to see the outside view, the, in that case, endoscopic view. Um, and next, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to change over to the live demonstration. Again, it's a simulated view. Um, and we're going to dial in now. This is a, a laptop, just a regular laptop. And it's using a regular, a regular broadband connection. There's nothing super secret about the connection. It's something that's available now. And right now, my assistant to my left, Ilya, is currently trolling. That's his face right there. He's controlling the RP7. The RP7 is the device that's used, uh, Dr. Wynn was showing earlier, that can roll through the hospital hallways, round on patients, go in the ICU. It's currently now rolling through this uh, simulated area. It's going to roll to the simulated OR section. And he can actually click on an area and it will focus. And this is again, this is controlled by the remote surgeon. So the surgeon, the remote surgeon can doing what he wants to see what he or she wants and not, um, and not necessarily bothering or asking someone to do that. So what he just showed you, the same, uh, again, RP Vantage that we showed before, there is a uh, screen that's for video chat. There's a screen that can actually be for tele um, telemonitoring. Uh, and then there's also the overhead, overhead view. So the actual device is mobile, but once it's in a spot, it stays there. And then again, the remote surgeon is, has the ability to control the view he or she uh, desires. And that's how easy that was. That was live right there. So that's how easy it is to connect. And you can just use a laptop. You just need certain uh, software that can easily be installed. And there's a little joystick that allows you to do those controls. So we'll go back to the, uh, I'll just finish up, go back to the uh, demonstrate. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a picture of the RP7. And, you know, you can, what he's showing you now is you can zero in on trocar placement. You can, you know, decide where you want to see. You can see the overhead view. This is the overhead view now. And again, um, you know, there's always the planning, the initial parts of, say, a laparoscopic case, you're going to plan where the trocars are going, and that's just happens to be a cardiac video. This is the intraoperative video view, so certainly once you got started, the uh, remote surgeon would be ma mainly looking at this view as the operative surgeon would, and then you'd have uh, a monitor available for video chat. So let's go back to the, uh, the slideshow, and just to, to, to um, emphasize, the idea of telesurgery certainly started in the uh, military realm, a, very, a lot, great interest to in NASA, but you know, what applicability does it have right now? There's a lot more that you can do with telemonitoring, but in, a, uh, in an OR setting as, as surgeons, that's the, the discussion I want to bring forward. And from the OR standpoint, we, as a Navy surgeon, I certainly been on a ship in the middle of nowhere, and it would have been nice to have had an intraoperative consult. You know, that's a possibility. It's, it's not really a possibility. No one can see what you're doing. So, um, you know, certainly applicable. The battlefield, you can think of different scenarios. And I, I would suggest that this concept of bringing te telecommunication and a telepresence or remote presence in the OR is really a step forward to a remote goal of actual performing telesurgery. As we become more comfortable 
and facile with that communication, just as we are with all our mobile devices and so forth. I think it's a natural progression, but I think telesurgery is actually a, a, a quite a distant, uh, in the distance from actually becoming a, a common practice. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time as well as the team at InTouch Health certainly couldn't have offered this presentation uh, without their help. Thank you very much, Commander Weisbach.